there is the thousand year reign of Christ in Joseph's story. It's amazing when you see this because we know that he already revealed that he was alive to them, right? And they were shocked. They were stunned that he was alive after all these years. Just like Israel will see that Jesus is alive. And then after that, he brings them in and blesses them and gives them the best of the land and unites his old family with his new and the best of the land for a long time. What does this remind you of? The thousand year reign of Christ that we see in the book of Revelation. So let's check it out. Let's look at the presentation on this. So we know that his family came back to Joseph. This is an actual wall painting in Saqqara, Egypt. And you can see they're wearing new clothing. They have the yellow pigment paint, which they know was the Hebrew people. And here uh, an Egyptian official is carrying a document to this oversized Egyptian official, which many scholars and archaeologists believe could have been Old Testament Joseph. He's wearing, he's carrying a scepter and a sickle in his hand. Very interesting because that goes along with Revelation, the picture, the image that, that John sees of Jesus, right? This is amazing stuff, guys. So well, here we are in Genesis 45. And they told him saying, Joseph's still alive. They're talking to their father, Yaakov, right? To Israel, to Jacob. Your Joseph is alive. <laughs> and indeed, he is ruler over all the land of Egypt. And then what happens? There's they, We know that there was a great harvest. So there's bread in all of Egypt. There's life there. They're going to live. They, they're saved if they go there where Joseph is, just like with Jesus. We know there was a great harvest and there was a great famine, right? We're in that seven-year time of this great famine, the great trouble, like Jacob's trouble over all the face of the earth, the Bible says, this famine was. So this is a huge picture of God's plan that we're looking at. But there was bread where Joseph was. There was food. There was life. People lived if they went to Joseph. So here's another part of that wall painting from Shaka from Saqqara, Egypt. Pretty amazing stuff. Watch this. Look at this. This is a Hebrew person. He's got a lyre in his hand. So you know when we read of David playing his lyre, which is like a, a square or rectangular guitar, this is probably what he played or what it looked like, you guys. It's, it's more like a guitar than a harp. And it's very interesting, right? So we're seeing this Hebrew man with a harp in his hand. There's a donkey carrying what looks to me like could be scrolls here um, and maybe some new clothing. And here's a spear. Real interesting stuff. I love the archaeology. Just mix that in a little bit too. It's so fun. And here's the full-size picture of that painting in Saqqara, Egypt. And you can see the, a lot of scholars believe this is Joseph's family coming back to him with that new clothing. They're wearing new clothing, right? And they, it's a little different than what the Egyptians are wearing. And here you see someone that is bound. And that could have been Simeon or perhaps it's the story of Joseph when he was bound. We don't know for sure. But anyway, it's just a beautiful picture. And then what, what ha what's happening now, right? Joseph has a Gentile bride. So just like the church today, which is mostly Gentile, um, there are some Jewish believers too, but... It's mostly a Gentile bride that Jesus has right now. But that time will end. The church age will end. And I believe it ends when there's the rapture of the church, the catching up of the church to be with the bridegroom, right? Just like those stories that Jesus told. There's the old Jewish tradition. What happened? The, the, they would get together, have wine, the father, all right, of the bride and then the bridegroom they would have wine and bread together and then he would leave and go back to his father's house and prepare a place a room attached to the father's house a place for him and his bride for this seven day honeymoon that they would have together and then there was this great banquet it would be like that seven year period where we're raptured up to be with Jesus and then what happens that's when the end they have the banquet right so before that they have that bread and wine together and then that groom goes off and he, and he prepares that place. And he doesn't know when it's ready. Only the father can tell him when he thinks it's ready and he can go get his bride. So you see the picture in those stories that Jesus told about the bridegroom, the virgins with their lamps and the oil, all that stuff is in that. But here we're seeing that Joseph has a Gentile bride and his brethren come back to him. All of Israel comes back to him, 70 people plus, right? They come back and they're saved. He saves all of Israel. 
and he has his Gentile bride with him. And this is what? During that time, that seven-year time of great trouble. So we see eschatology in this, the, the events of the end times we see in Joseph's story. So Revelation 19 says this, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I hear a lot of pastors and church leaders saying like, oh, I don't get into prophecy. I you know, that, that doesn't, that just distracts from the real mission of spreading the good news or helping people. That's hogwash. Jesus is into prophecy. <laughs> it says, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. A lot of those prophecies have been fulfilled when Jesus came the first time, but a lot of them have not. Ezekiel 38, 39 I think 36, 37 has been fulfilled in, in our time because Israel became this nation again and they're blessed. We might be on the verge of Ezekiel 38, 39 right now. We don't know for sure, but there's a lot to be fulfilled. The book of Revelation is to be fulfilled. A lot of what we see in Daniel, here in the story of Joseph, right? Because he was raised up, he had the Gentile bride that wasn't the end of the story. He saves all of Israel. So this is amazing that we can look at this in Joseph's story. So, where the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Revelation 19 says this, He is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Does that not speak of Joseph, right? Because Joseph, what happened all those years where Israel, the sons of Israel said that, to, they lied to, to their father Israel saying that, he was killed by, devoured by a wild animal. Just like Psalm 22 uh, was changed and they, it, it says that he was, he was devoured or, or, you know, pawed by a lion, devoured by a lion. That's not it. That's not what it says. It's he was pierced or bored through his hands and his feet. It was speaking of the cross. So there was a lie all that time. And it was a lie with Joseph. He was not devoured by a wild animal. And now they know he's alive. And, but Joseph shows them great mercy and grace. And that's what Jesus is going to show his people. Yeshua will show that to his people, his brethren, his blood family, Israel, someday. And this is why there's so, so much anti-Semitic Semitic garbage in this world today, even in America with these Ivy League colleges. It is, it's deplorable. It's, it's horrible what they're doing because... That's what Satan does. Satan hates the Jewish people. Satan hates Israel. And you're going to go along with that if you're a Christian? Don't do that. That's wrong. All right. So we see that Jesus in Revelation chapter 19 is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, just like Joseph, right? And his name is called the Word of God. We know that Joseph got a new name, Zaphnaf Panech, which means God speaks and he lives. <laughs> so awesome. This is so good. And then Revelation 19 continues, he will rule them with a rod of iron. And that's what we saw in that picture from Saqqara, Egypt, right? He had a rod, a scepter in his hand. And then Revelation 20 says, they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. A lot of Bible teachers, a lot of pastors say that we are living in the thousand-year reign, or it happened as soon as Jesus was raised from the dead. This is the thousand-year reign, the messianic age. If it is, I'm very dissatisfied for how things are turned out, because I don't think things are that way. In fact, Jesus said that his coming, his returning would be like the days of Noah. What was that like? A lot like today. There was violence, which is that word Hamas, all over the face of the world, right? Except for Noah and his family, who found grace in the sight of God. So, there's in six times in seven verses in Revelation, it says we, they will reign, rule and reign with him. And it says a thousand years, six times in seven verses. I think that's literal. I think God meant that to be a literal thing when he repeats it that many times in that little small amount of scripture. So this is an actual time that's coming. And it's a time where things will be restored on this earth. The earth is groaning and waiting for the Messiah to return, for Jesus to, to come back, to, to bring everything back to how it was in the Garden of Eden. And we're waiting for that. And nature's even waiting for that. So that's what we see there, the thousand-year reign. And now we're looking at this painting in Saqqara, Egypt, where he's carrying a rod and he has a sickle in his hand, which also speaks in the book of Revelation. You see Jesus with the sickle as well. And his brethren, 
the 12 tribes of Israel returning to him. He forgives them. He shows them great kindness. Chesed is the Hebrew word, loving kindness and tender mercies. So Genesis 45 continues. Hurry, go up to my father, Joseph tells his his brothers, his father, who's that? Israel. And say to him, so say to Israel, what uh, this is what your son Joseph says. God has made me Lord of all Egypt. To each of them he gave changes of garments. Again, we see that picture in Saqqara, Egypt, on the wall, well preserved, showing these Hebrew people with new clothing returning to this great official. And then it continues, Then they went up from Egypt and came to the land of Canaan to their father, Jacob. And they told him, saying, Joseph is still alive. And indeed, he is ruler over all the land of Egypt. But he was stunned, for he did not believe them. (laughs) I'll bet he didn't. They lied to him before, right? When they told him all the words of Joseph that he had spoken to them, And when he saw the wagons that Joseph had sent to carry him, then the spirit of their father Jacob revived. Their spirit of their father Jacob revived. So when Israel someday realizes that Jesus is their Messiah and he's alive, their spirit will become alive too, my friend. Watch this. This is so good. Here it is. And then Israel, then Israel said, it is enough. My son Joseph is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. Now Jacob sent Judah ahead of him to Joseph to guide him to Goshen. And they came into the land of Goshen, right? That was the best of the land. Goshen was like the promised land, the best of the best. And that's what he gives to his family. So here again, that wall painting, they're coming back to this oversized official, which many believe was Joseph himself. And here they are coming back and he's showing them great loving kindness and tender mercies. And the scripture continues, And Joseph prepared his chariot and went up to Goshen to meet his father Israel. So here's an actual Egyptian, uh, one of the the pharaohs or leaders of Egypt, what their chariot would look like. It's very beautiful. Perhaps this is even the one Joseph had. Who knows? And he rides it over to his father. You can just see the picture, right? Isn't this amazing? And as soon as he appeared to him, Joseph threw himself on his neck and wept on his neck for a long time. Isn't that beautiful? Don't you just love the when when there's a great family reunion, a reunion of a father and a son like this? And Joseph wept on his father Israel. He wept with Israel. That speaks of Zechariah 12, where Israel will weep with him. They'll look upon him whom they pierced, and they will they will mourn for him as one mourns for a newborn. That's what the scripture says. And we're seeing that in Joseph's story repeatedly. And it's beautiful, you guys. So let's go into it some more in Genesis 46. Then Israel said to Joseph, Now let me die, since I have seen your face, that you are still alive. (laughs) Jesus is alive, you guys. Yeshua is alive. He's alive right now. If you're in Israel, he's alive and he loves you. And then Genesis 47, he says, The land of Egypt is at your disposal. Settle your father. And now this is Pharaoh, he who sat on the throne, talking to Joseph right here. Settle your father and your brothers in the best of the land. The best. That's what Israel's going to get in that thousand-year reign, you guys. So that seven-year famine, the seven-year time of great trouble ended and then Joseph spoke to the people, to write to all of the people of Egypt. This is like a picture of all the people of the world. Now here is seed for you and your, that, and you may sow the land. So what does that speak of to you guys? That To me, that speaks of where there's a scripture that says that they beat their swords into plowshares 
and, and they were planting. It was like speaking of that thousand year reign, the messianic reign of the Messiah, where the, everything is restored and they're planting. They're beating their weapons into plowshares. They could plow the, the fields and sow seed and grow food. And it's just a beautiful picture in Joseph's story, you guys. It's, it's just amazing. So they said, you have saved our lives. You have saved our lives is what they say to Joseph. And that's what they'll be saying to Jesus, the remnant that's alive on this earth when that thousand year reign comes about. They'll be saying that you saved our lives. Thank you, Jesus. So it's an amazing thing. So Israel lived in the best, the best of the land, you guys, blessed blessed by God, just like all those promises and the in this, the prophecies in Isaiah and Jeremiah and all these other places. So Genesis 47 says, Now Israel lived in the land of Egypt and Goshen, and they acquired property in it and were fruitful. So they were very blessed. Psalm 2 speaks of this messianic reign as well. Watch this. In verse 5, Then he will speak to them in his anger. He's speaking to the enemies of Israel right here. And terrify them in his fury, saying, he's speaking to the nations that went against Israel. But as for me, I have installed my king upon Zion, my holy mountain. Right? That's where Jesus is going to rule and reign from Jerusalem. And I will announce the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have fathered you. This is David writing about Jesus. He's writing about the Father and Jesus. Ask it of me, and I will certainly give the nations as your inheritance. Again, speaking of this thousand-year reign. And the ends of the earth as your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall shatter them like earthenware. Speaking about the enemies, right? The enemies of God, which are the enemies of Israel. It's a matter of fact. That's how it's been. That's how it is going to be. The scriptures all speak about it. And he's going to shatter them. Jesus will, will rule and reign them with an iron rod. In Revelation 20, it says, They will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for what? A thousand years. That's right. A thousand years. There's no doubt about it, my friend. So, hey, if you haven't subscribed, you might want to consider subscribing to this channel. Hit the little bell too. You won't miss anything. Right now, we're doing the series, How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament. You can see the whole playlist right here. So click on this right here. Watch the whole playlist.